we see this theme of decapitation associated with the ball court and the ball game throughout Mesoamerica during this period. Uh, one of the most obvious examples of this is in the great ball court of Chichen Itza in the Yucatan, this the, one of the most important Maya capitals uh, towards the end of this period. What we see here is uh, two figures facing each other across a ball that is marked with a skull, and the figure on the right has his head severed and these same snakes emanating from the neck. Uh, he is wearing the, a Chichin variant on the yoke and palma. And across the way, we have a figure on the left wielding that same leaf-shaped blade of sacrifice and holding the severed head uh, in his other hand. So it's very clear that there are fundamental resemblances between the subject matters of these, these two programs, so the Tahin ball court programs and the Chichen great ball court program. But one has to remember that these are separated by really enormous distances. This is all the way across Mesoamerica. We find other aspects of the, the same cult, uh, if you will, at Tula and in the heartland of the Maya in the Patesh Batun. So the, there seems to be a circulation of ball court rites and symbolism and its relation to connections across Mesoamerica during this, the apogee of El Tahin. And El Tahin it seems to be directly involved in the dissemination of, of all this and, the, the, and participating in this, this ball game cult. Now the reason, or the, or the sort of the basic upshot of ball court sacrifice, is in fact the delivery of the objects of rulership to the tahin ruler. One does this, and one one does this in the ball court to receive the the uh, the crown, as it were, or the the objects that make one king from the gods of tahin. And the way this works out is in the central panels. The one central panel here shows two figures seated on a, an architectural piece. They are, they are right in the center of the rectangular narrative part of the panel. And the frontmost figure in his left hand holds a baton, and across his arm is wrapped a piece of cloth, a very specific piece of cloth. And he seems to be offering this, as well as a bolt of lightning in his other hand, to the human figure standing directly in front of him. The human figure gestures down to uh, what I argue is, in fact, the bundled sacrifice that he is offering the, the gods, the bundled sacrifice of the, the uh, ball court. So this baton and this rolled piece of cloth show up also on the right here in what is clearly an accession scene. In fact, the same deity on the, on the very right of this scene is shown with something, again, soft and pliable, which seems to be just a larger version of that cloth that we saw in the, the, um, the earlier ball, ball court scene. And on the, left of the, on the left is the figure holding the baton. This is being, this being presented to a figure that we can, we can prove is 13 Rabbit, an historical king of El Tahin, who is receiving this on his accession. So the reason for this elaborate ball court ceremony, at least as it is told in the South Ball Court, seems to be the accession of a king, the, the coming into power of a king. And this is all likened to, on the other side of the ball court, in the other central panel, this is likened to the creation of humans. Carl Talbot, years ago, uh, argued that this was the Tahin version of the creation of humans. And you can see, because of your familiarity with these creation sagas, what he meant. In this scene, there is a squatting figure who is, in fact, the same central Tahin deity who is committing auto-sacrifice, who, who is piercing his penis and bleeding on a figure wearing a fish helmet 
in this architectural ensemble that seems to be, in fact, uh, encased in some sort of liquid in, in water. And as Carl and, and, in fact, two other scholars pointed out uh, in the 1980s, this was much like the Aztec version of the creation of humans, in which Quetzalcoatl then bled on the bones of a previous humanity, a humanity associated with floods and, and being destroyed in a previous creation, and, the, and being turned into fish, by the way, in, in several variants of the tale. And then they are, um, those bones of this previous creation are then the raw material that make us after the after of course the penitential lot of sacrifice of Quetzalcoatl, and so the in some way and, and this is this is a very typical Mesoamerican ploy in some way the giving of the objects of rulership to the king is likened to the very creation of the world the the same God I, I think this might be the most obvious help, the, the same God, the principal Tahin deity here, is responsible for both. He created humans and he gives the Tahin king the right 